Good day, everyone. So Seattle passes a minimum pay rate for Uber and Lyft drivers. It happens to be 16 bucks minimum. This is something you can fall back on as a minimum. And I truly hope that all cities follow suit. Doesn't matter whether it's Austin, Orlando, Miami, Denver, Albuquerque. You got to have a minimum for a driver, right? Because the, some hours are just off. Some hours are just unproductive, wasting gasoline, sitting there, you know, end up going to get some fast food. You're actually spending more than you're making in that one hour. So you to to have this minimum is something that every driver should push for, even if it's here in LA or San Diego or San Francisco or Monterey, right? We got to have a minimum that we can fall back on. So the, the question is, you know, can Seattle drivers make it work with that minimum 16 bucks? Obviously, the upside is you want to earn way more, 20, 30, 40 on a very busy night, but something to fall back on. I think that's what we should be pushing for as drivers across the world, right? City by city in stated. So the city became the second in the nation to create a compensation standard for ride hailing drivers after New York. New York put this in place. They were pioneers, right? And if you are a New York driver, do share. Does this work for you? Does I mean, does, does your New York minimum work for you? Does it take care of you? Does it take care of your expenses? Because New York should be a role model for Seattle and other cities to follow, right? If New York drivers say, listen, I can make it with that minimum, obviously there's all the plus, the upside, but at least I know with that minimum, whatever it is, 20 plus in New York, I can make this business work. So feedback is important when this goes into effect from Seattle drivers. I'm keen to hear from you. I appreciate Noam Scheiber for writing this great article. The Seattle Council of approved a minimum pay standard for Uber and Lyft drivers on Tuesday, becoming the second city in the country to do so. Under the law, effective in January, ride-hailing companies must pay a sum roughly equivalent after expenses to the city's $16 minimum hourly wage for businesses with more than 500 employees. So that obviously more than 500 employees, that that goes for Uber and Lyft, those conditions. The pandemic has exposed the fault lines in our systems of worker protections, leaving many frontline workers like gig workers without a safety net, Mayor Denny Durkin said in a statement. Now, the safety net, I'm here in California. I can tell you that the California citizens taxpayers bailed out the gig economy to the tune of $413 million because Uber and Lyft did not put anything into the safety net. That's that big proposition fight going on here in California, right? So um, we need some protections, just the minimum protections at least in place for drivers. Um, quick shout out to my sponsor, Kova, K-O-V-E-R. If you're on any of these platforms, if these look familiar, you have your auto insurance, you have your medical insurance, you know, whatever that may be, uh, you know, here you could have Medicaid, Cover California, private insurance, whatever you decide to get, but you need a gig protection plan. If things go wrong, if you get kicked off the platform, if you find yourself in a hospital bed for a few days or your car's in a body shop, you're not getting your earnings, they kick in and cover up to 80% of your monies. Tons and tons of great benefits starting at $7 a month. Back to the article, um, Seattle's law passed in a 9 to 0 vote, pretty, you know, one-sided, 9 to 0, and it's part of a wave of attempts by cities and states to regulate gig economy transportation services. It's modeled on a measure that New York passed in 2018. Last year, California approved legislation effectively requiring Uber and Lyft to classify its drivers as employees rather than independent contractors. Again, what, what this editor or this writer does not know, you're not an independent contractor. You're not a true, it's, it's the label that they put on you and say you are an independent contractor. We're not. That's what we're truly fighting for with AB5, right? Because companies can employ 
employees, right? And they can also put independent contractors in place. They do that at the headquarters at Uber and Lyft. Why can't they do that for the drivers? So which would assure them protections like a minimum wage, overtime pay, workers' compensation, and unemployment insurance. The companies are backing an initiative on the November ballot that would exempt their drivers from the California law. Uber and Lyft have received more favorable treatment from a federal from federal regulators last week, the Labor Department proposed a rule that would probably classify their drivers as contractors, though it would not override state laws like California's. As in New York, the Seattle law will create a formula for minimum compensation for each trip, a combination of per minute and per mile rates that are scaled up by what is known as the utilization rate for the fraction of each hour during which drivers have a passenger in their car. The idea is that a lower utilization rate should correspond to a higher per minute and per mile rate to compensate drivers for being less busy. Exactly. So here in California, for example, when they try and sell you on this 120% of minimum wage, you have to read the fine print, right? That's what they're trying to con you on or sell you on, on yes on 22 and um, that is only for the hours driven. When you reverse engineer it, it works out to $5.65 per hour. That is nothing, California. You should not be voting for that. So I always say no on 22. Another thing that they're putting out there in California is 30 cents per mile. That is nothing. Can you imagine driving from LA to Vegas and halfway back, 500 miles, right? And you're getting 100 and you, you're getting, you're getting, just over $150 for that trip. That doesn't even include your wear and tear and gas. Doesn't make sense, yes, on 22, right? At 120% minimum wage in California, only for driven hours does not make sense, does not make you money. You got to fight and stand up for hourly rates in the city, the minimum, so you have a safety net. And in California, you got to fight for true independent contractorship so you can set the rates. Your feedback, please, um, would be great, greatly appreciated. Uh, they go on saying that the formula is tended to produce an hourly pay of just under $30, right? So the goal here is with that minimum, the goal is to produce an hourly pay of just under $30 before expenses and to motivate the companies to keep their drivers busier rather than flood the market with cars to reduce passenger weights. A lift, a lift spokesman said the city's plan is deeply flawed and will actually destroy jobs for thousands of people, as many as 4,000 drivers on Lyft alone, and drive rideshare companies out of Seattle. Uber declined to comment but said in a recent letter to the Seattle City Council that New York's policy has resulted in fewer rides and higher prices for passengers and that it had led the company to restrict the company uh, number of drivers on the platform at once. Uh, Michael Reich, a labor economist at the University of California, Berkeley, who was an architect of the New York measure and advised Seattle on its new law, said that the average driver pay had increased in New York and that overall revenue had risen enough to offset the drop in demand because of high fares. Right? That's the part that Uber does not want to admit. The growth in rides slowed after the policy went into effect, Mr. Reich said, but added that it was largely for reasons unrelated to the policy. Beyond the pay standard, the Seattle measure stipulates that the companies must hand over all tips to drivers, that the tips cannot count toward the minimum, and that the companies must provide protective equipment like masks to drivers or reimburse them for these costs, right? So... Don't mess around with our tips. Our tips are our tips. Don't try to factor them into the equation. That is what we get paid for our good services. So tips are tips, folks. They cannot be, you know, incorporated into Uber or Lyft's formula. They have to be paid out separately to you because you're doing the job. You deserve that tip. Your input, please. Thank you.